Hello princesses! Today I'm going to be doing a get ready with me featuring the products from the Etude House Milky New Year collection. I think it's called Milky New Year um, or it's just called Milky. I can't remember anymore, it's been a while since I got them, I'll be honest. So for this one it's not the most interesting get ready with me um, because there's only a set of blushes and eyeshadow palettes. I got the nude eyeshadow palette which is Banana Milk which is really nice. Um, mostly because I got the other Innisfree palette and I didn't want to have too many colours going on at the same time because I know that I'd get overwhelmed. But if you'd like to see how I achieved this very low-key look in a very chaotic video because I'm running super late, uh, then please just keep watching. Okay, so for foundation I'm going to start off using my favourite one which is the Etude House Double Lasting Serum Foundation. Mine is in the shade Y03, which I think is called Ivory. I actually haven't used this one in a while because it's been super hot in um, New Zealand through summer and it's a very dewy foundation but I'm only going to have makeup on for the afternoon and I'm going to be inside the whole time so I thought I'd bring it out again. I'm focusing the coverage on the middle part of my face because I want it to kind of like blend outwards <laughs> so I don't have to use too much product. We'll see how that works out for me. And then basically I'm going to blend out all of this and then use the remaining color on the outer part of my face and apparently, rumors say, although well, it looks a bit light, <laughs> anyway, apparently it'll really help to um, kind of make your face look a little bit less wide because you get less coverage on that area so like especially with a lighter foundation when you're adding a lot of the lightness to the edge of the face it can kind of make your face look a little bit wider, apparently. So we're going to give that a go. Side note though, like I kind of love my fringe like this right now. Why? I don't know. This foundation is definitely a bit light this year. That's okay. It's the middle of summer and, you know, getting tan happens. <laughs> so that's kind of how the foundation looks. You can't really tell that I have got less coverage on this side of my face. And to be honest, I have a lot of scarring and redness there anyway. Um, it kind of just looks like a really lightweight finish foundation, which is great. The foundation already kind of has like a light to medium coverage, so it's not bad. She has a little on the light side, but it's not, it's not terrible. I'm going to attempt to add a bit of colour using a contour. This is by Bia and this is the, I think it's called the last contour maybe, and it's a number one milk tea brown. I'm just going to put it sort of like right down there, slightly higher than my cheekbone because apparently yeah, that's the thing to do these days also. I was watching a video on how sort of like makeup trends have changed from like 2016 versus like to now and I didn't realize how much they had changed but I kind of like it because I feel like the the now makeup which is more light kind of just looks like the makeup that I was doing in 2016 anyway like I don't do a heavy glam I'm just you know super lightweight super natural sort of look so I was like well it's not exactly the you know foundation choices that I would make normally or you know like the application or I think a lot of them do with fox eye trend where it's like a heavy concealer in here and you know soft eyeliner and I think it looks nice. Haven't done it but I think it looks cute. Next I'm going to powder my skin using the Laura Mercier Translucent Loose Setting Powder and reaching for my brush I'm going to use my regular brush this is the 106 Zoeva brush. I'm going to focus it in the center of the face and the forehead because Forehead, fringe, sticky, don't like, this one. I basically give my skin and then like my entire face a light dusting of powder but no baking, nothing heavy, just the usual brows. I'm kind of in a rush today, I'm going to use a brow gel, this is the Tony Molly Ink Colouring Brow which I have had for ages and I really really like. It's kind of a little bit light for my um, hair colour and I just got that everywhere just in at the moment um, because I did buy it when I had blonder hair, still have the blonde tips but that's fine, but it's super quick and it just kind of, I have a lot of brow hairs already but it just darkens them up a little bit and makes them look a little bit more presentable and when this little patch is dried, because I did mess that up a little, I'm going to go back and fix it up. <laughs> I can usually scratch it off when it's dry so I'm not too worried. So for eyes, I'm of course using the Etude House Milky New Year um, Play Colour Eyes Palette. I have mine in the shade Banana, Banana Milk. It's like the yellowy kind of browns, but like, you know, browns. <laughs> because we are in more of a hurry, we're doing a really lightweight look 
and I'm not going to add, I'm going to try not to add too much glitter to it because I pretty much always do that. So I'm going to take this brown on the corner here. That one is called Banana Brown. Yes, yes, Banana Brown. I'm going to take this and I'm going to put it into the crease and then I'm going to see if I can kind of put it like kind of onto the eyelid as well. I haven't really used this palette very much yet. I've been trying to use that um, Innisfree palette that I had previously, but I have a feeling that it's just not going to be, you know, the palette of my dreams because I just find it so hard to use. It's very frustrating. <laughs> I think it's just the colors, you know, like I can look at this, this palette and a lot of people will think that it's super boring, but it has all the colors that I would use on a day-to-day -day basis, so I like it. I'm also going to put this underneath the eye. The colour itself is really nice, it's quite neutral, they're very easy to blend, however they're not very pigmented, you know, think about the colour in the pan versus the colour that's coming off, it's very light, and I love that. <laughs> but if you're looking for something that is more pigmented, you maybe want like a heavier glam, this may not be the palette for you. I'm just kind of blending the colour like down onto the lid as well a bit. I don't prime my eyelids because I am lazy and honestly I, I very rarely use eyeshadow anyway so I just found that the eye primers went off so quickly. It doesn't normally make a huge amount of difference to my eyeshadow looks I think. So I basically just stopped doing it and I haven't really looked back since. So I feel like I kind of want to leave the eyes looking like this. I know that's like really uninteresting though, so I'm gonna meet myself halfway and put a little sparkle on. So I'm gonna use this color here, which is Banana Shake. It's kind of like a beige glitter, beige sparkle. I am super certain that I've actually done this look before, but oh well. So it just brings a little bit of light and then, um, yeah, a little bit of glitter. I'm gonna put it in the inner corner as well. And it kind of looks like similar but I guess slightly more complete that way. Then I'm going to be using a brown liquid liner. This one is from Dolly Wink and I'm going to do my eyeliner as usual. And that is how it looks. It's very much like just a straight line with a little wink. <laughs> I messed up the wing on this one. Honestly I think it looks nicer though. Maybe I'll try and add some more to this. No, those are two different shapes but that's okay. I'm going to use my favorite mascara which is from Hamish. It is the Dialism, Dialism mascara. This is my second one. I actually went out and bought another one. Oh, and curling my eyelashes using the Shu Udenura Eyelash Curler. Again, same, same. <laughs> I think this mascara makes my eyelashes look nice, but most importantly, it's super easy to remove because it is water soluble. It doesn't smudge or anything like that when I am wearing it. Sometimes I do get like tiny little imprints like underneath there, but nothing worse than any other mascara and I don't have to struggle to get it off like it's just so nice I already have a lot of eyelashes so when I'm adding a mascara like this I don't have to be too picky which is a blessing because I think that it makes them slightly like longer slightly blacker <laughs> especially the tips obviously but it's not like a, a miracle work of this mascara so this is how we're looking and then let's see if you can get this off a little bit it would have been better if I used a Q-tip, but there we go. That's um, it's better. But this is how the eyes are looking at the moment. I think that it looks really cute, really simple, quick, and super easy. So then we have blush, and we have three in the collection. There is this orangey kind of color, a pink, and then the purple. The purple is okay, but it's not my favorite. So I'm down to orangey or pinky. Hmm, I'm gonna go with the orange. I think it'll look better with the eyeshadow. It's quite a warm, kind of like cream school kind of color. So I'm gonna pick this up with my Zoeva 127 Luxe Sheer Cheek Brush. And I'm gonna put it like in the center, like that, and then blend up. This doesn't actually look that good with the eyeshadow. My eyeshadow is very cool toned and this is very warm. What am I doing? Lastly for lips, I'm gonna be using the Peter Peter Ink Gelato Black tea with milk, which I just tried and I'm not sold on it, but it'll do. Look guys, it doesn't match. I don't know what I'm doing anymore. <laughs> oh, my life is spiraling out of control. Why not add some lip gloss? This is from Etude House. This is the soft drink tint in number one, I think maybe, milk tea. And I'm just gonna stick that on top because it smells nice. 
Did that make it look much better? Mm, not really, but that's okay. So here's the finished look. I think I'm just gonna leave the fringe like that for right now because it's it's kind of made its way out of the clip, but it's just living its best life. Um, and I think it looks cute. So overall, uh, yeah, nah, mm, mm, the collection is a bit mm. like I think it's a cute concept, and I think the packaging is really cute. Um, the blushes are very white based, so they are a little bit like chalky in a way, even on my fair skin. I like the eyeshadow palette though. Um, I think it's probably not that inventive, especially because I already have the Fake House palette and they have a very similar color story. Um, they, I don't want to say they have the same shades, but they are like really similar, like really similar. I probably do not need both, but if you don't have the Fake House palette, or you have the Bakehouse palette, you don't like how it looks, you want something more square that fits some of the other things, that might be an option. Um, but I will do a few more looks with it and I will let you guys know in the review later on. So thank you guys so much for watching this review. I know it's a little bit chaotic, but <laughs> yep, we got through in the end. So thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.